Hello everyone, welcome to the video on ESIC 2019 question paper explanation. In this video, I'm going to explain four of the questions which are given in 2019 paper. Now let us look at the question first. The first question is, when the anesthetic is injected in subarachnoid space, it is termed as, options given are epidural anesthesia, surface anesthesia, infiltration anesthesia and spinal anesthesia. Now let us understand this thing. Epidural space means, see our brain and spinal cord is is covered with a membrane called as meninges. Meninges has got three different layers, dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater. Now, see the diagram, uh, just beneath the crani cranium or uh, spinal bones, there, there is a structure called as um, peri periosteum. Now, beneath that peri periosteum, there is a meningeal layer, it is called as a dura mater. Now, after dura mater, you have arachnoid mater and then pia mater is there and inside you have brain and spinal cord is there. There are spaces between these membranes. The space between periosteum and dura mater is known as epidural space. Understand this word. Epi means on the surface. So on the above of dura mater, you have a space that is called as epidural space. See, during surgeries, women are given anesthetic in this epidural space. That is called as epidural anesthesia. Now, after this dura mater, you have arachnoid mater is there and between the space is called as subdural space. Whereas, the space between arachnoid and pia mater is known as subarachnoid space. Now, subarachnoid space is important because at this space, cerebrospinal fluid is there. And spinal anesthesia is given at this place. So, the question is about this one. When the injection is injected into subarachnoid space, it is called as spinal anesthesia. So, the correct answer for this question is option number 4. The remaining two surface anesthesia is nothing but topical anesthesia. Infilt infiltration anesthesia is... Uh, uh, an local anesthesia which is given through injection. So for this the option is option 4 spinal anesthesia which is given in subarachnoid space. Now let us move on to the next question. Now next question is pilocarpine is an alkaloid containing. Options given are pyrazole, imidazole, oxazole, pyrol. Now look at the structure of this uh, pilocarpine. It contains imidazole and furan. So in the options option 2 is given as imidazole. It contains the tetracyclic ring imidazole. Now understand this thing. So whenever you read medicinal chemistry questions, what we need to learn is for every structure, identify the heterocyclic rings. It is not required to learn the entire structure. Just identify what all the heterocyclic rings are there and that will be enough. Now understand another thing. See, azole is a word which indicates a five-membered uh, ring with nitrogen heterocycle. Five-membered ring with nitrogen heterocycle is azole. Six-membered ring with nitrogen heterocycle is azine. Seven membered heterocycle with nitrogen is azepine. These are all common names. Pyrazole, two nitrogens are there in one two position in a five membered ring because it is azole. Imidazole, two nitrogens are there in a five membered ring with one three position. Oxazole, two hetero atoms are there in a five membered ring. Oxygen and nitrogen is there. That's why oxa and aza is there. Right? And pyrrole is a five membered ring with one nitrogen. This is about heterocyclic chemistry question. Look at the next question. A drug that promotes diuresis by antagonizing action of aldosterone is. You see, aldosterone uh, is a mineralocorticoid. It absorbs sodium and water inside the body. So when it is blocked, water and sodium goes out of the body and it causes diuresis. Options given are furosemide, bumetanate, spironolactone, estazolamide. All of them are diuretics. In this, furosemide, bumetamide are loop diuretics. They act at the loop region of the nephron, hence they are called as loop diuretics. <laughs> and they block sodium potassium chloride symport so all the ions will be going out along with that lot of water goes out that's why they are also called as high ceiling diuretics the question here is about uh, aldosterone antagonist and that is spironolactone the spironolactone blocks the aldosterone receptor and hence blocks the reabsorption of sodium and water causes diuresis estazolamide acts at proximal convoluted tubule it inhibits carbonic anhydrase enzyme so the answer for this uh, question is option number three spironolactone now the last question, which of the following is a macrolide antibiotic? <coughs> See, uh, there are different classes of antibiotics are there. Options given are erythromycin, streptomycin, neomycin, canamycin. When you look at the options, streptomycin, neomycin, canamycin, all the three belong to one category called as aminoglycoside antibiotics. The question is about macrolide antibiotic and the option is erythromycin. Macro means big. Erythromycin is made up of 14 membered ring. It is a lactone derivative, cyclic ester. So the answer for this question is option number one, erythromycin. I hope this is useful. All the best.